Hi folks and welcome back. I'm camping this weekend with Andy from Kent Survival, who you all know. Hello. Um, we're in Shropshire in this magnificent cave house. This is a privately owned cave house on a private estate. We've, we've been given special permission to, to be here and to camp here, which we're really excited about. It's in excellent condition, isn't it? Brilliant. No vandalism or anything, just no. natural deterioration, I guess. Yeah, you can see all the, all the, all the markings from when it was carved. Um, so half of it is carved into a, a sandstone rock face cliff and uh, the other half has been built uh, with, with big sandstone blocks um, to extend it. And uh, there is a family living here up until about the 1890s, I think yeah, it was, wasn't yeah. it? Um, yeah, family of, of five living in this little place. So um, yeah, there's all sorts of cool little nooks and crannies and, and places to put candles and stuff, I suppose. And, and there's a fireplace. To so decorating. We, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. We'll light the place up with candles later on. It'll look really cool. So um, yeah, we've got a little bit of clearing to do just to, to create a couple of flat spots to camp. We've both got, got bivy, so we need uh, we don't need a big flat area, but enough to sleep on, obviously. Nice and simple. Yeah, good and simple. We've had to walk up quite a big hill to get up here, um, past some 16th century uh, water gardens, or the remains of. Mm. Uh, amazingly, just there in the middle of the woods. Eerily. Yeah, yeah, spooky. There's old steps and, and walls and little gateways and things through the woods, all overgrown and and uh, yeah, lost to time. Amazing Reclined. place. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So this is the the cave section, the bit that was actually dug out. And um, you can see at the back over there, there's a couple of nooks and one large one in the middle with a, a gap underneath, which has been partially blocked up. Um, apparently, uh, the family that lived here used to have a fire underneath there and there was a tin bath that sat on that shelf there so they could wash their kiddies uh, with uh, the heat from the fire and there's another bit there which has been blocked up apparently that went down but um, was unsafe so at some point in the past it's been it's been blocked up and there's little shelves and nooks and crannies all around the place and then over there it's been excavated even further and there's some more little nooks and things. Um, obviously, a lot of these were carved. You can see the, the chip marks on the rock there from when it was carved out. But there's also a lot of holes in here which have been made by masonry bees, which are making this place their home now. And there's loads of bees in here buzzing around and checking out little places to make their homes. This uh, cave was also used by highwaymen um, well before that family lived here um, as a hideout, it's believed. There's a huge amount of history here um, and various things have been found in the area, coins and, and interesting bits and bobs. And this side here, we've got the, the built kind of bit, which has been added on. So that back wall there is part of the rock cliff. Again, with that little nook there, look, and this side here, that's rock, and then blocks have been added to the top, and then it once had a roof. You can just see the gable there, and some of the rafters which have fallen down. And there was a floor forming a little loft space. You can see the little sockets where the um, floor joists went there. And over here we've got, we've got a fireplace, big fireplace, massive stone bresomer there, and then going up to the chimney above, all overgrown. The other gable, window, and doorway. And you can see the remains of the roof and rafters and everything on the floor here. And then that goes back and into the cave where we just were. Absolutely. Fantastic.
Well, we've both been hard at it, cutting firewood and uh, working up a bit of a thirst here. So um, Andy's gonna gonna get a brew on using his, what's it called, a Pico Pic stove? Pic Pico grill. Pico grill. And it's like super, super thin, flat pack. Tiny. Um, yeah, wood burning yeah. stove. Lovely. Thank you, mate. Beautiful. Oh, you had to slurp longer. <laughs> We've got some good food to, to cook up this evening, so um, I'm going to get this fire lit. We're lighting it just in front of the cave, just by the entrance. Um, there's a nice spot here, so the smoke can be taken away and won't come and smoke out the, the, um, the cave itself. Um, I'm just using uh, Tinder card, the Hamro Tinder card. Um, as a as a tinder, you've seen me use this stuff before. Right, I'm gonna make a start on dinner. I bought the old pressure cooker with me today. This is a new one, um, bigger than my, my black one that you may have seen in, in, a, in another video. Um, this is 10 liters, I think. I've just got a load of um, just off the shelf chicken seasoning, Schwartz stuff, and um, I'm just pouring it in, in the bag here, so that um, it coats the chicken, saves me getting it all over my hands. Massage it all over the chook. While that chicken is just browning, I'm gonna chop up an onion. I'm gonna have potatoes and carrots cooked in with the chicken. Also a bit of onion and some uh, celery, just for a bit of flavor. So we've got some aromatic flavor going on.
So the chicken is browned. I've got a load of baby potatoes and little tiny carrots. They've got a name. Can't remember what they are. Andy? Baby carrots? Baby carrots. They've got a name. Sean, Sean, Chantilly? No, that's cream. Something anyway. They're little carrots. So they're all going in. And the celery and the onion. And we've got one of them little bottles of wine. Two chicken stock cubes. And then I'm going to top that up with water. It's really important you don't have too much water in a, in a pressure cooker. It needs to be no more than two thirds full um, so that you don't risk blocking up the, uh, the pressure release valves because you really don't want it going bang. Put the lid on. Clamp it down. So there are two pressure release valves on here and a safety release valve as well. As long as they're hissing, everything is good. The beauty about using a pressure cooker is that a chicken that would normally take an hour and a half to cook, say, um, it cooks in about 20 minutes in here. Dinner is on and hissing away. Um, I just want to say a, a massive thank you and shout out to, to George, Rachel and Finley. Um, you know, George has organized all of this, uh, got us a, the permission um, from the landowners and um, just be an absolute star. And uh, we wouldn't be doing it without him. But not only that, he's also given us the world's biggest beers <laughs> to enjoy with our dinner. They're litre cans of Fax Viking beer. Never seen anything like it. Let's crack into it, yeah, shall we? Yes. Heck. <laughs> it looks like such a piddly opening. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, guys. Oh, oh. Needed. That is, that is not bad. It's got cool graphics all over the can of Viking warriors and stuff somebody drinking out of a cauldron which is pretty apt really yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> pretty much a cauldron mm. Mm. right that has had 20 minutes cooking time um, i'm gonna let that depressurize naturally um, that'll take about 10 or 15 minutes and when all the steam stops coming out like that um, then that's safe to, to, take the, to take the lid off. I'll pull these valves off um, as we get to the end and just make sure there's no, no pressure in there. <laughs> oh, the smell. Let's see if I can get, get this out of here. Hold now. <laughs> oh, it's gonna, it's gonna break. Let's try that way. I think we lost some wings. <laughs> Legs. Oh, no, the legs are on. Legs are on. Well, I lost the wings off the chicken. <laughs> They're somewhere there in the pot with all the other veggies. But um, the uh, the gravy that's in there is really thin at the moment. I'm going to thicken it up just with some gravy powder. Just good old Bisto Best. Yeah, can he beat it? I'm just trying to thicken that up a little bit so it sticks to the ribs properly. Uh, <laughs> the chicken's sitting in my plate at the moment, so I'm just gonna, um, I don't know, cut it in half. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
That is cooked. Z. That is cooked. That was 20 minutes of cooking time and resting time. That is unreal. Look at that. Look, actually, that is juicy and tender as you like. Stop squeezing my breast. <laughs> <laughs> bit of bit of thigh with your breast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Oh no. What's that V word? Veggies? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> garnish. <laughs> oh, you got a bit of wing there. Mm. Hey. Ain't no fit Rub. like a chicken wing. A bone. A bone. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Oh. <laughs> Feed me Seymour. There you go, mate. <laughs> wow. That's a plate. Whew. That's a good plate. It's mm. lovely. Mm. Really good. Oh, that is good. Wow. Considering that. Chicken has really been kind of force cooked, isn't it? It's, it's tender. Perfect. I'm um, going to put a link down below for where I got the pressure cooker from. It's a company called um, Tandor Adventures here in the UK. They're just a fantastic bit of kit. You know, if it all comes out like this, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's the food comes out well. Everything is kind of contained in them. It's sealed. So you don't lose anything. You, nothing is evaporating. You just don't lose anything. All the flavor is kept in the pot and it's quick. So you use less fuel. Now your cooking time is, well, it's a third, isn't it? Yeah, it's nothing. It would take an hour and a half, wouldn't it, to cook a chicken at home in the oven or whatever. You know, half an hour. And 15 minutes of that is, uh, or 10 minutes of that is um, just cooling time <laughs> while it depressurizes. Yeah, and actually it's really good. Really, really tasty. Well, we've had a really nice evening, just uh, sitting around the fire, chatting, great food, and uh, really just enjoying this place where we are, this amazing place. Um, we're really privileged, actually, to have uh, been able to spend the evening here in this, um, in this old cave house, which has just been untouched. No vandalism, you know, it's literally kind of as it was when it was uh, vacated by its last occupants. And that's rare. Yeah. Amazing place. Um, we, uh, <laughs> we haven't set anything up <laughs> uh, uh, with regards to sleeping. So we're, um, you know, it's, it's now sort of like 11 o'clock at night and um, we're now having to set up our bivvies and everything. But to be honest, we didn't want them sitting in the background while we were uh, sitting around cooking. Um, spoiling the uh, you know the look of the of the film really you know because we're going to be sleeping obviously inside the cave and um, we didn't want our our bivvies there because it just looks beautiful with the candles and everything so uh, we're going to set everything up now get ready for bed and uh, and turn in but yeah it's been an absolutely fantastic evening.
Morning folks, had a very comfortable, peaceful night's sleep in that cave. Um, yeah, this place is just so quiet at night. Absolutely lovely it is. And um, really nice and dry, despite the fact that uh, it rained all night long and it's still raining now. <laughs> um, we've just gathered up a load of twigs from inside the cave. It's just so dry in there. The twigs lying around on the ground are uh, just totally, totally dry. Um, and um, we split down a couple of those pine logs that Andy cut yesterday, just so we've got some, uh, some dry wood. And he's just lit a fire. He's on uh, fire and breakfast duty this morning. He's gonna cook us up a, a Southern American feast yeah. of, of some sort. I'm looking forward to that. I know he's brought a Dutch oven, so yeah. All sounding promising. So what are we having then, Andy? Well, I'm making the biscuits to go with our sausage gravy for our biscuits and gravy. I'm doing it out here where it's less smoky than the cave right now. Smoky Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's have a little look. Ooh. What do you reckon? Look pretty done to me. They look good. Take them off. Oh. I've already got a tiny bit of oil in there, but I'm just gonna put in the sausage meat. I'm just gonna start sprinkling in flour. Make up kind of a roux, pretty much, with the oils from the sausage. Slowly thicken. These are okay to handle, so just stick them on the plates. And our thick sausage gravy. Looks divine. It smells pretty nice, doesn't it? Mmm. That was worth the wait. <laughs> it was a bit of a wait, yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's good. Andy, this is absolutely spectacular. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to get our breakfast finished off and, um, and then get everything packed away. Got a long drive back to Norfolk. 
about uh, four and a half hours. So um, yeah, I want to I want to get cracking really, get home in uh, in good time so I can start editing. Absolutely, thoroughly enjoyable camp. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. It's been a good one. Been a good one. And uh, don't forget, go check out Andy's Andy's video. I think his is going to be up on Halloween. A little spooky, <laughs> spooky twist on it. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll put a, I'll put a link down below um, to his video when it's up because I think mine mine might come out um, before Andy's because he's going to save his for for Halloween. But make sure you go and check that out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. <coughs>